difference. My under eye looks bright, but it flows. Guys, my cab is gonna be here in 20 minutes and I am just about halfway done with my makeup. Ooh, that's a good word. I don't wanna be pretty, I wanna be iconic. Like, each product brings something different to the table. Placement is key. Everything is given exactly what it needs to give. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello and welcome. My name is Bolaji. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for always tuning in. Today's routine is going to be somewhat glam and I've decided to record it and show you the process of how I achieved this makeup look. As shown earlier, I have gone ahead and prepped my skin and now my skin is looking very much uh, juicy. It's looking scrumptious. It's looking full of life. Like, it looks like there's energy in it even though i only slept for about three hours today but that's fine because no one's gonna know and by the time we put on the makeup and we add the concealer who's gonna know how are they gonna know without further ado let's get into this video and i'm late as usual so i kind of need to rush to this if i start to talk too fast um don't take it personal i just time is not on my side basically Okay, so first things first, I'm going to be starting with my primer as usual. And coincidentally, I'm using the same primer as I used in the last makeup video, which is the Charlotte Tilbury Wonder Glow Primer. And I'm just going to put this at the on the bottom half of my face. All of the Charlotte Tilbury products go well together like if you use all of them in one routine I promise you your skin your makeup is going to be looking so so as you guys saw that I used the Charlotte Tilbury magic serum and the magic cream and I use now I'm using the primer and just look at the base it's given like it actually is given now for this next step I don't normally do this but I figured why not I'm going to go in with um, this eyeshadow primer that I got a very 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 long time ago I oh it's from Barry M I'm just going to put a little bit on my eyelid literally just a little bit first time I used it I kind of OD'd on it and it just looked horrible same way your foundation or your base needs something to stay on your eyeshadow also needs something to stay on. Now that we're done with that, as I said, today is going to be a little bit extra glam. So therefore, I'm going to be color correcting with the Fenty Beauty Matchstick Corrector. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, the Fenty Beauty Match ma the Fenty Beauty Matchstick Cor the Fenty Beauty Matchsticks Corrector in the shade Pumpkin. This is my first time using this actually. So as you, I don't know if you can notice. I don't know if you noticed from the camera, but I do have a little bit of discoloration under my eyes, which is normal, and around my mouth area here. And because this is my first time using it, and because I'm short for time, I'm not going to use that much. I'm just going to use a little bit and then see what it looks like.
the brushes I'm going to be using in today's routine are the Mima Cosmetics. And if you can see the Mima Cosmetics brushes, and guys, I've been using these brushes for a while now. I don't remember when they came out, but honestly, I like them and I enjoy them. Wow, you guys saw in the previous makeup video, although this is not my first time color correcting, in the other video, I had that like really light peach one and it wasn't my actual shade so this time around i made sure to get the one that was my actual shade and i'm not mad i'm not mad at all like this is coming out good i don't know how much this is showing on camera but guys it looks good it looks really good i think next time maybe i'll put a little bit more in my under eye but today and also for the sake of time plus it's my first time using it i'm very satisfied with how much i put in my under eye but honestly i can see a big difference in my upper lip area my lower lip area like honestly i, I can see a big difference there and i really like what i'm seeing so after that i'm going to be using this setting powder to just help with the oil control as usual for that i'm using this powder puff that i got from amazon last time you saw that i used the brush but ever since i got this powder puff i've kind of upgraded to using this one now it's just very convenient and it can get into all of the corners without ruining my brush because i found that the brush i was using it was getting I was ruining it basically because like I would have to dip the brush into the setting powder but now I don't need to do that anymore I literally just do this and put the powder all over my face I'm just going to do my eyebrows off camera because my eyebrows takes a long time and I'm very short for time I feel like every time I'm recording something I'm always in a hurry but honestly like if I sat here talking about like the details of my eyebrows it just takes a while so I'm just going to go off camera and do that and come back later Okay guys, I'm back and I'm going to swiftly go into an eyeshadow. I'm using the Makeup by Tammy and Revolution eyeshadow palette. And honestly, the colours, my go-to colours for like a neutral type of look if I don't know what I want to do are Sundown, Horizon and I put a little bit of sunset on it for like shimmer. And I'm wearing a black dress today with like a cream scarf, a cream, cream bag and cream shoes. So I was thinking of... Hmm. see for lips i want to do a nude lip so i don't know what to do for my shadow i honestly do not know so i'm just going to go with neutral colors because i'm currently indecisive so neutral colors always work i'm just going to add sundown to my outer crease that always works out but i'm not an eyeshadow person at all i'm more of a base person for my eyeshadow i just do whatever works now I'm going to add Sunrise, which is the orange colour. I'm really hoping this works. I've used Sunrise before, but I don't remember what colour I used it with. So, I'm hoping this combination doesn't... Okay, it's not that bad. I don't know how well you can see from the camera, but from looking at my mirror right now, it's not that bad. Honestly, it's not. Like, believe me when I say it's not and because my dress is a long black dress basically a plain dress i think adding a shimmer on my lids is not going to be a bad decision today even though i feel like that's what i always do i always add shimmer to my lids because i'm not really an expert in my eyeshadow i literally just add shimmer to like cover it up honestly oh my lord honestly though the shimmer always does it every single time like you can never go wrong with shimmer on your eyelids like never finally we're going into base and the first product that i'm using is the charlotte tilbury flawless filter guys i'm pretty sure at this point you guys have seen this product everywhere i use this product in the summer and let me tell you something let me tell you something this product in the summer when the sun was out when oof i can't i honestly could not but you know what, I don't have time to rave much about this. I'm just going to apply it and you guys will see. By the way, if there's any discrepancies because of the lighting, please ignore it. Honestly, it looks better in real life. 
and it's going to blend out. Because I'm going to add, because I'm going to use the foundation afterwards, but I don't use that much of the flawless filter, I need to use a little bit. And now I'm just blending it out with the Mima Cosmetics foundation brush, the number 11. And just like that, I have stained my headband. How beautiful. Now I'm going to be using the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. Guys, this foundation. Oh, I can't, I feel like I can't rave about it enough. Honestly, like, I don't think I do, I don't think me talking a lot does justice to this foundation. So I'm just going to show you. I'm now using the number seven foundation brush and just see for yourself. The Beautiful Skin Foundation and the Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury I feel like are the perfect combination for a healthy, glowy foundation look which is exactly what I'm going for tonight. And just in case I haven't mentioned previously, when I go in with my foundation I don't bring my brush all the way to my under eye, like where my concealer would be normally. I literally just stop around here, like where my bone is here, that's where I stop basically. For concealer, I'm going to be using my current favourite concealer which is the Huda Beauty Overachiever Concealer guys. This bad boy right here, we love her to pieces. Like we love her so much. Honestly though, I literally just apply it there. And I bring it up a little bit if I want a fake nose contour. Like I'm doing right now. Also, I want my eyeshadow to look a little bit <laughs> snatched. So I'm going to be putting a little bit there so that when I'm blending out, I can take it upwards. While my concealer is drying down, I'm going to be using the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer, but I'll be using it to contour instead. I'm just putting it literally exactly where my cheekbones end like right there and i'll put another one here just a small line because i don't really contour heavily so honestly those two small lines are all i do for contour and honestly what you do is just blend it in position because you've placed it exactly where you want it to be so you don't need to be moving the brush helter skelter up and down everywhere you literally just blend it in place now i'm going to be blending up my concealer <gasps> how can i forget this it's because i'm in a rush guys i forgot to blend i forgot to conceal the bridge of my nose well highlight the bridge of my nose how can i forget to do that the one that i normally forget to do and i don't really do all the time is my cupid's bow but the bridge of my nose, that's what creates the fake contour. And you guys will see, like, after blending this out, now the bridge of my nose looks a little bit highlighted. And then when I'm bronzing, I'll put a little bit of bronzer here and there. But you see afterwards, to create, like, the fake nose contour illusion. What I do is I pat it here for a while and before taking it outwards. And then I come back in a little bit, pat, then go back out. And then that's literally my first line of concealer. Pat it in the middle here, take it out a little bit, come back in, pat it all while like looking up and looking ahead. Honestly, I'm a beauty blender girl for concealer, okay? Guys, the girls say brushes work. And don't get me wrong, I've used brushes a few times. It does work, but I don't have the patience for it. Especially today when I'm late. 
and I feel like whenever I do my makeup, I'm always late. So yeah, it's beauty blender for me all the time. As you guys can see, my concealer has basically blended into my foundation. Like the concealer, like look, my under eye looks bright, but it flows, it's blended into the foundation and now it looks like a <sighs> like look at the difference. Look at the difference. And because like I also brought it out to my under eye, this side of my face, my right hand side of my face is lifted and the left side, like you can compare, you can, guys, you can see the power of concealing. It's right there. The evidence is right there. Don't get me started. I feel like I need to do a routine where I'm not rushing and I'll be able to explain to you guys like the importance of every single makeup step because today you've seen the importance of highlighting one day when i'm not rushing i need to sit down and do a proper makeup tutorial where i just talk about the importance of each makeup step i need to stop talking now because i can't lie i'm late and i was going to i was going to do a bright on the eye but now i don't know if i have the time my cab is going to be here in 20 minutes and i am just about halfway done with my makeup guys what should i do Bright on the eye or no bright on the eye? I'm really conflicted. I feel like I don't have the time, but at the same time, I want to do a bright on the eye. Like, I feel like this is obviously bright enough and you can definitely stop here. But, I don't know what I want. I don't have the time. I honestly do not have the time. Guys, you know what? I think I'm just going to, I'm not going to do a bright on the eye. I'll use my Charlotte Tilbury bright powder to like, Give the bright on the eye illusion today i'm using the revolution super dewy blush in the shade totally blushed honestly guys i've been so obsessed with blush <gasps> i od'd on the left hand side i od'd on the left hand side you know what i need to start doing i need to start like putting the blush on a little palette before it goes on my face because I feel like every single time I always OD on my blush like always and what I tend to do is I tend to use a blush that is the same shade or similar shade to my eyeshadow basically because so every, just to make everything look seamless and very cohesive Ooh, that's a good word that's a good word, cohesive. Yeah, we learned that in physics GCSE when we were talking about water. Water is very cohesive. Like it runs, it goes together. If oh, guys, I'm a walking dictionary. I lied. I can barely speak English. Walking dictionary. What in the world is that? That is a big lie. But honestly, I'm obsessed with blush, and I feel like I've said this previously, but. If you OD on your blush, don't worry because your setting powder and your face powder is going to fix it. Most especially, most especially your setting powder. Like, it doesn't matter. It's going to get fixed. Once you once you set your under eye and once you bronze, it doesn't matter how much blush you put. Which is why like sometimes some people would go over their blush with a powder blush as well because after setting it on the eye and after bronzing the blush is gone so like, this is not going to be happening to me my cab is coming in 15 minutes and i am out here spilling product on the table like in what world is that normal with the brush that i use for the foundation i'm going to use that brush in between my under eye and my blush to kind of like bring it together and not create harsh lines between the blush and the concealer guys honestly this is all about cohesiveness and making it look like one and not like two different things or like 10 different things that i put on my face just to make it look seamless and i am rushing because your girl is late and not just late late af the next thing is to set out on the eye and i'm going to be using my huda beauty loose baking and setting powder in the shade kunafa i'm using this powder puff and taking a little bit of the powder it's not that much so i don't really need to do that much dusting and I'll just press it into my under eye like so. 
Can you see the difference? Oh, guys, I need to do a good two hour sit down video to explain the importance of every single makeup step to you. Because look at this side. I keep looking at the viewfinder because I'm just trying to make sure. Look at this side that I have used my setting powder for. And look at this side I haven't used a setting powder. Look. Look at how it blurs it out. Can you... By the way, this camera, I'm not using no blurring effect, no blurring filter, nothing, nothing. Everything you see is real. Look at the different... Oh, Lord. And people... Yeah, people want you to look the same after putting on makeup. You want you want me to look the same after going through all of this while I... You want me to look the same? Yeah, you're joking. I don't want to look the same after putting on makeup. I want to look different, you know? I want to look like me. I don't want to be pretty. I want to be iconic. Like, do you guys know that TikTok sound? <laughs> I am a TikTok girl. Like, I am on TikTok every single day. Except when I have so much work to do and then I have to lock my phone away. But, apart from that, one thing I love about the pop off as well is that it gives you the opportunity to go into every single corner, every single angle without manipulating your makeup. And guys, just look at that. Look at that. Look at my under eye. Can you see the blurring effect the setting powder has given to my under eye? And someone is going to look at me and tell me, oh, why do I need a setting powder? What does a setting powder do for you? Oh, why do I need this powder? Why do I need a concealer? Like, you can see with each step what each product is doing. So don't ask me, but why do you have 10,000 steps? Why do you have so many makeup products? This is why. Because each product brings something different to the table. Okay? That's the reason. For bronzer, I'm using the Makeup Vitamin Revolution uh, Paradise Glow Palette. I'm not really sure that's what it's called, but honestly, I'll put the link in the description box down below. And for bronzing, I'm just going to put it just above where I contoured, which is like right there. So it, it kind of goes contour, bronze, and blush. High blush is like high on your cheekbones, almost into your under eye. Bronzer is like a little bit in the middle, and like contour is like literally just right underneath your cheekbones where your cheekbones end. Okay, just because I feel like I don't have enough blush and it's basically faded, I'm going to use one of my old eyeshadow palettes I have before, and I'll be using this shade because it's very similar to my blush shade. So I'm basically using it as a powder blush, even though it's eyeshadow. But who said? makeup is one size fits all who said you can't multi-use with makeup products no one so that's exactly what i'm going to be doing we're going to act like it's a blush and put it like you can see the difference as to where i'm putting my blush than where i'm putting my bronzer and where i put my contour so honestly placement is key to brighten my under eye a little bit i'm going to be using my charlotte tilbury airbrush flawless finish powder and I'll be using the same power puff that I used for my under eye and you can see it is really bright this shade is number two in medium so take a little bit guys this part is really bright so I'm just going to put that in my under eye and you can see okay even though like all the light is bright and everything it's kind of bright in my under eye a little bit for the last step i'm just going to go in with my elf powder foundation and i'm going to put that in every single place that i put my foundation but like you can still see basically the bottom half of my face i'm going to use my charlotte tilbury airbrush flawless setting spray honestly i've been using the setting spray for like the past one year I don't need to say much. I've used it for one year and I've gotten it over and over again ever since it has finished. That tells you everything you need to know about the setting spray. But I'll still apply it just so you can see. I don't have the time to wear lashes today so I'm just going to use mascara. And hear me out. I have been doing the mascara only look for like the past few months. And I'm really feeling it, okay? Because I feel like when I was wearing lashes, I was struggling. Guys, I was fighting for my life when I was wearing lashes. So now that, like... I don't really wear strip lashes as often. Like, even for my birthday, I didn't wear strip lashes. Like, that's how much I've been enjoying the mascara only look. And I will try to get back into strip lashes, or maybe not. We'll see. Now, I'm going to use the Revolution Sports 
fixing spray and guys honestly if you're confused as to why i'm using setting and setting spray and fixing spray setting spray pulls everything together the powder layer the cream layer the primer everything it makes it look like one and it makes it cohesive while fixing spray holds your makeup it does not move it goes nowhere like when i say when i say it doesn't move it doesn't move so which is why i use the two setting spray to make it look like one and fixing spray to just make sure it goes nowhere so now i'm going to be using that Oof. so i'm going to use this black lip pencil that i got from absolutely no idea it's from natural collections actually an eye pencil but i'm using it as a lip pencil because eye pencil lip pencil potato potato the same thing okay Oh Lord. I know there's a little bit of a mistake on my lip liner, but I'm going to use my concealer brush that I use for my on the fight that I use for my eyebrows to kind of like cover it up. So that's what you do when you make a mistake on your lip liner. Just use the brush that you use for your concealer and it's gonna be like mistake who? Where's the mistake? Who made the mistake? Because I didn't make a mistake, you didn't see a mistake. So what mistake are you talking about? Exactly. My last product for the day is my Fenty Beauty Heat Lip Gloss that the whole world, that everyone and their mum, everyone and their mum who's into makeup has been talking about. This is going to, actually, this is my, I got it literally just last week. This is my first time, like, using, using it. So, you can see, like, it's literally new. My first reaction. Oh, my God. Guys, look at the lips. I'm going to put on my outfit and show you the final look. Guys, if you've made it to the end of this video, you are a real one because this is the final look. And honestly, I'm obsessed, but I can't say much right now because my cab driver is waiting outside. I already told him five minutes, then he called and I told him another five minutes, so I gotta go. But honestly, I'm obsessed with how this look turned out. Like, the lips is giving the eyes is given you know the base everything is given exactly what it needs to give this is my dress i mean you can't really see it but it's like a it's a long dress basically and i need to be carrying this bag with it as well so that is it if you made this in this video thank you for watching and please don't forget to like comment and let me know what you think down below and also give me any suggestions for other makeup videos you want to see and i'll see you in my next video gotta go bye Mwah. love you all